To understand carpet cleaning chemistry or even fabric cleaning chemistry, there's really only two items you have to understand. One is going to be pH and the second one is going to be solubility. Those are the important things that we're actually going to be talking about. Now, before you get all nervous and say, I don't understand pH, I don't understand solubility, you really do, you just don't know it. There are the things that you'll do every day in life. When you get up in the morning and you go in to brush your teeth, you're going to pick up a tube of toothpaste. That tube of toothpaste is an alkaline material. In other words, if I took a pH reading on this, it would be somewhere eight, nine, somewhere in that range. Because what's on my teeth is my morning coffee or the foods from last night, which are all acid materials. To give you one other example, now, you may have uh, gone out last weekend and, and partied a little too hearty. Maybe you had a little extra beer, too much pizza, especially that round-the-world pizza that we're talking about there. And the next morning you woke up and you just felt really bad. And what did you go in and take in the medicine cabinet? You took an antacid to basically neutralize this excess acidity that's in your stomach. So you're dealing with pH every day of your life, you just didn't realize it. But let's give you a couple of experiments now that we can show you a little bit different how it's actually gonna work within our field. Second thing that I talked about was solubility, so I wanna start my solubility experiment before we do the pH. And what I'm going to do here is I have two containers that have sugar cubes in them. The first one, I'm actually going to put a dry cleaning solvent, in other words, a volatile solvent. That just means that it evaporates. And I'm going to add some water to the other sugar cube, okay? And we'll let those just work a little bit while we're working on the other substance here. What we're gonna do now is we have two different substances we're gonna work on. The first one that I'm going to use is going to be a solution of ammonia. I'm gonna put it into this cup I'm going to put 10 drops in, all right, on that one. On the other cup, I'm going to put 10 drops of acetic acid. Hopefully I count it right. And then I'm going to take pH paper. You'll notice we have pH paper, same type of paper. All depends on which type of a container you like. And we're going to take a reading. A reading just means pH paper dipping it into it. And you're gonna notice on this one that we have a very strong alkalinity. Matter of fact, it goes off the chart on this tube because this only goes up to 10. This is actually ammonia, it's usually about a pH of about 12. All right. So set that down and we'll check our acidic material here. And this is going to probably be right about four. Acetic acid is actually household vinegar. All right. Now, we have one other material that we're going to use here, and that's going to be phenolphthalein. And here, phenolphthalein is a pH indicator, but only for alkaline materials, usually a pH of about 10 or so. Put a couple drops in here, and the acetic acid, of course, it's not gonna show anything. In this one, we're actually gonna show, and you'll notice that we get quite a color change in there. Now, what I wanna know is, if I mix these two together, an acid and an alkaline, which is what we're always doing in pH balancing, will I neutralize out the formula? So we have a cup here, pour it in here, I'm gonna take this, and you'll notice that it did not change at all. In other words, I still have a quite alkaline formula. So because it was alkaline and acid, doesn't mean that it's going to balance out unless it's equal, and in this particular case, Ammonia being a pH of 12 and the acetic acid being about a 4 is not going to balance out. So what I would need to do in this case is I would need to add more acidic acid. By mixing that in there, squirting a little bit in there, you'll notice just a little agitation and it basically balances it back out. What we're doing normally in everyday carpet cleaning or in fabric cleaning is that we would be using an all fiber rinse, matrix all fiber rinse, to help neutralize out the excess alkalinity that we used with our pre-sprays or preconditioners to balance it back out. Most of our fabrics are gonna to like to be left on the acidic side. Pretty much tells us what we need to know about pH. Second thing we talked about is that the solubility. Now, if you'll notice in this particular one here, what I have is this is my sugar cube in a dry cleaning solvent. And if you notice, nothing has happened. All right, it's still working that way. Now let's go over here to the other side 
and bring up my sugar cube in water and you'll notice it's completely dissolved. Now, here's the thing. Sugar is water soluble. All the solvents in the world will never break it down. So solubility is a key part in what we're cleaning. I'll show you one other thing we can do. We'll take that solvent and we're gonna knock that sugar cube down in here. And in just a moment, well, it'll probably take more than a moment, but in about a minute or so, what's gonna happen is that sugar cube will start to dissolve because the solvent itself is actually rising to the top because solvents are lighter than water. So in this case now, because the water's on the bottom, the sugar cube will completely dissolve. That's your solubility. Understanding that soft drinks and foods and those types of things are all water-based, using a solvent will not do anything for them. On the same instance, if I have lipstick or oil or grease or maybe paint that's been on the carpet for a few weeks, all the water-based products in the world are not gonna do anything for them. So understanding solubility and pH, and you have pretty much the right idea, using that chemistry and the right method, you should be able to clean almost any carpet or fabric.